Well, I was out running on my Steel MS650 two weeks ago and wasn't acting right. And uh, all of a sudden smoke started rolling out of the side of the machine. And long story short, these three tiny springs broke off. The ears of them broke off, which made the clutch just expand out and not retract. So essentially, it was riding like the chain brake was on the whole time. So I took everything apart and cleaned in the housing really good. Got all of the old tree sap and chain bar oil and all of that out of there. Inspected the oil pump. That wire there is the, the pump assembly. You can see inside of it. And did a couple other things. There's a few videos out there that were pretty good about showing me the takedown, but it was a little outdated and it was missing a couple of parts. First, one thing it said to do was to pull the spark plug out, which isn't hard to do. And I actually changed my spark plug while doing this, but they told you to use a plastic C inside the piston to stop the piston from traveling up and down to remove the clutch off this side of the chainsaw. And actually that's a good way to mar the top of your piston, mess with valves, that type of stuff. It's actually easier to remove your pull rope assembly. You got that nice great big bolt, it's actually a nut, that's going through the assembly there, the crank, that you can hold a wrench on one side and spin the clutch off the other side. And you're not taking any chance of marring the piston surface up. Now, a couple other things I'll mention about this is that one, I got to inspect the inside of here and clean it and it looked great, but it was a little bit filthy. So that was good. And you wanna clean those fins out to help keep the machine cool, which I did do. The other thing is, this clutch is on reverse threaded. So it is righty loosey, lefty tidy for that old saying to help you remember it. It's the opposite. It's not lefty loosey, it's righty loosey. And the other reason I took this pull rope assembly off is because it's on there fairly tight. Now, this is the other reason I made this video is to show or talk about rather, that it is torqued down on the 650, the 660, the 066, the 064 to 37 foot pounds. And it took me a little bit of hunting and digging to find that. Why did my clutch springs kill themselves? Well, I think this needle bearing cage had given up. I've got the old one, it doesn't have any needle bearings in it. And I think one of those got bound in the assembly, which threw those springs off. So I cleaned the clutch up, ran some parts cleaner on it. It honestly looked fine. The local part supplier said, yeah, it looks fine. I wouldn't replace it either. And got a new needle bearing. We'll grease that with some red grease. You can use some lithium grease as well. Got a new E-clip or C-clip if you want to call it that. It's really an E-clip. And we'll go ahead and put all of this back together. One thing to note if you go to the level that I did here with replacing these springs in your clutch assembly, you wanna make sure that these aren't bound up at all, that there's no burrs. Those should slide right on and off. They're just like a brake assembly on a car. If that's catching or burred up from before, it's not going to allow the clutch to operate the right way. After you've done that, it's pretty easy to put those springs through there and then grab pair of needle nose pliers and just push that spring clear through. You can see that it's gone through well on the back side there. And then we'll grab the last spring and push that one in. And now we've rebuilt that clutch spring assembly. Really not super hard. I did hit this with a little bit of parts cleaner um, just to clean it up before we put it back in the machine. But this piece is all ready to go. 
Now what we're going to do is grab the washer that goes behind this and put that in first and line up our oil pump wire so that we know where it's at. Easiest thing for me is to get that oil pump wire right down pointing at six o'clock. And you'll know that it's in the right position. It will kind of help you to guide the drum and I'll show you what it looks like to put that drum on there. But first we're gonna grab this washer and notice that there is a bell on this washer. There's a concave side and a convex side. We want the bell sticking out. So put the cave side in and it'll make sense when you put it on there because you'll see it's gotta go over that oil pump housing. You put that guy in there and it sits on that. And then we're going to grab our clutch. And again, this is lefty tidy. We'll put that guy in there and spin it on. And it's pretty fine threaded, so it takes it a hot minute to get down there tight. And okay, it's now starting to spin the crank assembly. Make sure your saw is off. You'd hate to have it accidentally start up on you. Not that it should that easy, but safety first. Have it in that off position and our wire should be lined up. And then I'm gonna grab my torque wrench to torque this down. All right, I have gotten my torque wrench, set it to 37 foot pounds. I've also put a wrench on the opposite side of the saw. I'll turn it around so you can see it. Just putting that wrench on there. And we will put it on there and grab our torque wrench. And the moment of truth. Okay, do it one more time. Okay, I don't know if you can hear that beep, but it is telling me that I've torqued it to 37 pounds. So we've got it to the correct torque specification. And inevitably, this is gonna be really hard to see for you guys, that wire has moved. So I'm going to turn it back down to the six o'clock position and grab my drum assembly here. And you can see that notch on there and there's a little hash mark on the front of it as well. And put it down on that wire. And the problem is, is you won't feel it catch. I can spin that wire. It'll only sit cockeyed. See how it's not sitting flush in there? So I can look at that wire and put it in there and you can feel it flush. It will firm up when I put the needle bearing on there, but I feel like it's easier to get this on there first. And then I'm gonna grease that needle bearing and put it in here, put the sprocket for the chain on there, and then put that keeper on top of it. So now I'm gonna grab that needle bearing and I'm gonna put some grease in it. And I'm just gonna use some red grease here. And it's what my dealer told me to do as well. They sell some steel specific grease. A lot of people use lithium grease in this, white lithium grease. Honestly, lithium grease isn't the best for high heat situations. It's a great assembly grease, but it's not the best high heat assembly grease. And so I'm gonna put that red grease on there like they had told me to and it's on there good I'm gonna seat that in this housing now Easy 
fancy as it should. There we go. Goes on there the right way. We'll go about it the opposite way. It was, it dropped in there the first time, but it's fighting me a little bit this time. So our key is down at the bottom. Line that up. And you can see how it fits flush. There's no wobble perfectly in there. It would be sitting crooked if I didn't have it lined up on that wire. You can look in there as well, but that feels really good and exactly how it should. There's no rock, there's no tilt, and I didn't get any grease on the drum itself on the inside of it, so we're good there. Now we can take and put the rest of the assembly on. Now I want to grab a sprocket, and I bought some new sprockets just to reassemble this. A lot of people don't change those drive sprockets as frequently as they should. So I put that on there. There is also a recess for that keeper in here, so it's flat on the back and a recess on the front. I'm going to put that on top of there, and then grab my new clip. And I'll be honest with you. I think this is what failed and started that whole catastrophic failure. I think this clip broke and then let the sprocket slide out and then the needle bearing was riding funky and the whole thing just went down from there. So go ahead and push this guy on there. It's now recessed in that the right way, and it should be able to spin freely on top of it, which it does. That whole drive goes in there. This should be able to flex with your bar, which it does and doesn't catch. That all fills beautifully. There's no rocking. Just, just a slight, but it should have a tiny bit of play in there. We've greased that assembly, cleaned up everything else. We are now set to put the pull rope assembly back on and then the bar and cover and the handle I had to take the I had the felling handle on here the wraparound handle that makes it a little bit more difficult to get all this off as well so that's why I've got a few more screws to put back in here that wraparound handle makes it a tiny bit more interesting as I was mentioning earlier because I've got to get the pull rope assembly underneath it there, like you just saw, for the chain break. And then we put the wraparound on top of that. And there is one long screw for, one bolt, I should say, for the chain break. And it goes in the top one there. I'm going to start those by hand. And then the other three are all the same size. So we can tip that up and make sure everything's lined up there, but it's looking great. Drop these in there. Tight these all by hand rather than using the driver to do it. So that's in there. Now I'm going to grab my bar and chain and put that together and throw it on here. And I'll show you the final procedure of that. It always takes a minute to unwind the chain. Okay, I've put the bar and chain on here. And a lot easier to do this clean, I'll tell you that much. And before I obviously get that too tight, I wanted to show you a couple things. One, I cleaned the inside of my housing here 
just because it was full of tree sap and everything else. It's a good idea to do that every now and then, pull it apart. Use uh, I use some citrusol. I'll throw a link to that and the other parts that I've got down in the uh, description here. The citrusol honestly was amazing for taking off this tree sap and and all of that old bar oil and stuff on the saw itself. The housing here can go on like this, but I wanted to show you one other little trick that a lot of times people aren't aware of. If you're running a longer bar like this saw, you're supposed to put a little bit of upward pressure on that bar as you're tightening it down so that there's not all that leverage hanging off the end of it that's making it on a weird angle. So just a little upward pressure out there on the end. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten those down. And then once I get it tight, I also like to give that screw just a little extra twist there on the end. Now, a couple of things. Like I mentioned, upward pressure on that bar as you're tightening it down. But if you're storing your saw, especially after running it, if you didn't know this, you didn't read in your manual, you're actually supposed to back that pressure off because that chain has heated up while running and it's stretched. And if you have it tight, because it kept going slack on you, like if you were limbing or whatever, you kept throwing your chain. If you have it tightened up and that chain shrinks, you can bend that bar or worse off, bend your crank. Both, honestly, a bad day, but you bend that rotating housing, that rotating assembly inside of there, your saw is destroyed. So a couple of tips there that if you didn't catch those in your owner's manual or you don't have a copy of your owner's manual or whatever else you got going on there. So that's... That's tightened down now. I'm gonna check all of these screws on the housing real quick and throw this wraparound handle on there. That's really not super interesting. It's just four bolts here. And then we'll fire it up and make sure it's running right. Just another reminder, there are, just like the pull rope cover, there is one longer bolt than the others. And that goes in the bottom of this housing and you can see that there's a bushing in there for that wraparound handle. So we'll put those two in there really fast. Okay, we've got game brake is working right. We can slide our blade. If we lock it, it is locked in place. We have our bolts tightened over here on the pull rope assembly. If we go ahead now and put our foot in the stop section to hold us for starting. some of that crud that we loosened up out of that clutch assembly as well, but it's acting perfect. Everything came together great. Love this uh, great old 650 saw. I've had it for probably 15, maybe even 20 years now. My dad gave it to me for my birthday years ago. So I've ended up milling a lot of stuff with it. But that's the assembly of it, putting everything back together. The handful of tricks. Taking the pull rope assembly off, much easier to get to that rotating assembly so that you can get that clutch off. The clutch is righty loosey, lefty tidy. The needle bearing, you know, put a little bit of grease on it. 37 foot pounds for a steel 066, 660, 64, 650. 
Um, I read some settings for 50 foot-pounds. I believe that is for the 880, and I think some people were misquoting that. Uh, put some upward pressure on your bar when you're tightening it, and that's about it. The other thing I did, I did throw a new spark plug in here. That spark plug is gapped at uh, 030. So if you're trying to figure out that, it is gapped at 030, but everything's rocking and rolling. Let's go cut some trees.